What's up guys, it's Wholesome Joe back with another tutorial series. Well, there's something you don't see every day. This one is gonna be about how to build your own 3D printed Ghostbusters Proton Pack from start to finish. Let's get into it. So guys, if you've been following along with my Arduino Ghostbusters lights and sound tutorial, then you know kind of what you're in for with this video series. But I'm going to take it a step further this time and I'm going to take my time with this one and do everything step by step so that you can go from start to finish from nothing to a fully completed proton pack. We're going to do the 3D printing, we're going to do the sanding and the painting and the texturing and the electronics and the stickers and all of the things that you need to do to build a 3D printed Ghostbusters Proton Pack. Now, there's some things that I need to go over before we get into it. This is just gonna be kind of an intro video for the series. These videos are going to come as I finish them. I'm going to try to make them very detailed and I'm going to take a little bit more time than I did with my Arduino series. And this is going to basically be an updated version of my Arduino series since we're going to do the electronics too. So if you want to go from start to finish and learn how to build a 3D printed Ghostbusters Proton Pack complete with lights and sound, this is the video series that you want to pay attention to. I want to first, before I get into all the nitty gritty, thank everyone who has watched my other videos, commented, liked, asked questions, it's been super overwhelming the response that I've gotten from those videos and that made me more motivated to do another tutorial and I thought that this is probably the best one to do since a lot of people have asked me this question over the years and I myself have now gotten quite a bit of experience building these things so I figured that I would help you if you're starting on your journey to build a 3D printed Ghostbusters pack. Now, the first things that we need to get, go over are kind of what you're gonna need, um, what the costs are going to be and just some general information about how the tutorials are going to be formatted and how this is going to be presented and so that will give you a good starting point to get started now the first video is going to obviously be about how to actually 3d print um, your proton pack now i've got a bit of a head start because i knew that the, these videos would take forever to make if i had to wait for every single one of these parts to print so I've thankfully already got an entire proton pack already printed all the way down to the booster ladder, whatever you want to call that thing. Um, I've even got the whole front part of the shell, if you can see that, already printed. Thanks to my good friend Taco Belly um, in the Ghostbusters community, as he is known, um, he hooked me up with a completely printed proton pack so I already have that printed so I'm gonna be a little bit ahead of you guys but we are gonna go back and uh, go through the basics now I'm not going to go through every single uh, part I'm not going to show you how to 3d print every single part because honestly Q and now Taco Belly have done such a great job with these files that they print pretty much pretty much uh, without a whole lot of you know tinkering like you they print really well um most of them print without supports and because i want to give a shout out to q who is the create the original creator of these files that i'm going to be using so um and i will put all of the links for everything that we're going to be using in the description of the video we're going to be using uh q's uh now or now taco belly's proton pack files um, I believe the files that were used for this particular pack that I already have printed were the Mark II or Mark I of those in the middle. Um, they made a lot of changes since then. A lot of the changes are small, some of them are big, but because I already have this printed, this is the one I'm going to use. You should use the latest ones um, because that'll give you the most accurate proton pack, but everything we're going to do is going to be pretty much the same. So you can follow along and still use the newest files and it should be no problem. You can get those from the 3D printed Ghostbusters props group, which I'm going to put a link to in the description of this video. Um, once you have the files, you have to print them. These take a long time to print. Um, I suggest that you go slow, start with the smaller bits first like 
this guy here, the end filter. Um, or you could print the uh, ladder that I just had in my hand. You could print that first. Um, a booster frame, that's what it's called, booster frame. You could print that first. I do suggest printing the smaller parts first because that'll give you a chance to dial in your printer, figure out what your printer settings should be, and so then when you get to the more complicated prints, then you'll you know be in a much better shape. And not to mention that depending on what printer you have, if you have a larger printer, you can print some of these pieces in one piece like the cyclotron and some other pieces as well. If you have a smaller printer, like an Ender 3, for example, Q has been so kind as to split these files up so that they can be printed on an Ender 3. There's a little bit more work in post when you do that, but it allows you to be able to print an entire Proton Pack on a printer the size of an Ender 3. So for all you Ender 3 or uh, printers that have a small print bed around the same size, that is uh, good information to have for you. Once we get into the 3D printing, I want to throw uh, a shout out, Once, like I said, to Q. He actually has a set of instructions on his Etsy that goes through every step of how to print his files. So instead of me going through a long drawn out process of trying to explain to you how to print and how to position and how to orient every single one of these parts, I think it would just be better if you grabbed his guide and follow along with that in the printing process because it really goes through a lot of details on how to print the Proton Pack files. If you run into snags and you have questions about that, you can definitely ask me in the comments. I've printed these multiple times, so I kind of have a good idea, but most of them are gonna print with no supports and they're going to be oriented on the print base exactly how it seems like they should. Um, which is going to be flat face up for the most for the most part There's going to be a few tricky ones in there, but you'll kind of get an idea as you go which ones are going to be um, Difficult and which ones are not however the first video that we do about the printing itself is going to be a basic overall guide for how you should print them in terms of what settings you should use what infill settings you should use and all of that good stuff. But I'm not gonna go in and say, this is how you print the, this specific piece because that would be really long and drawn out and nobody would wanna watch those videos. Um, but if you have questions about it, feel free to ask me. Now, the next thing we need to go over is budget. Now, a lot of people, th when they think of Proton Packs, they think of very expensive, you know, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, depending on how crazy you wanna go with it. Now. Luckily for us, 3D printing is one of the most budget ways to build a Proton Pack, mostly because the printing of it itself doesn't cost a lot of money because filament is pretty cheap. Now, you're going to need at least three to four rolls of filament, mostly because you're going to have some parts that are probably going to fail you're gonna probably have some dud parts that don't print like they're supposed to, and you're gonna to have to account for that, and you're gonna need extra filament for that. But typically, it will take between three and four rolls of filament in order to print your Proton Pack. And depending on where you get your filament from, what brand of filament you use, um, filament can cost anywhere from 15 to 25, $30 a roll, um, which is gonna give you, you know, if you do the math, you're looking at probably $75 to $100 worth of filament just to print all of the parts you need. Now, there are a lot of parts on the Proton Pack that you can 3D print. You can 3D print just about everything that's on the Proton Pack, or if you want to take it a step further, you can uh, substitute some of the 3D printed parts for either real parts that you can source through places like GB Fans or Etsy or some of the Ghostbusters communities. There's a lot of uh, makers who have fabricated some of these parts in uh, resin and even real metal in some cases and things like the clippered valve which on the real proton packs was made of metal it was a real item that you can still source today when we're getting into budget i like to keep things on a low budget because i am poor i feel like there's a lot of other people out there who are trying to do this on a budget and they don't think that they can and i want to prove that you can you can do it a lot of people have bought the new HasLab Proton Packs, have bought the new Spirit Halloween Proton Packs, and this is going to be something that's going to be, I think, overall a better quality 
a product or end result that's going to cost around the same as those for the most part you're not we're not going to be able to build a fully functional lights and sound proton pack for the same price as the spirit the new spirit halloween pack but we will build a pack that's better than it um for a reasonable amount of money so i'm looking at trying to keep this thing within 500 to 600 dollars for the entire build we might go over that i'm going to try to keep track of it so that you guys can see exactly what we're putting money into and you can make the price go higher or lower depending on the parts that you use. Like I said before, everything on this except for the hoses can be 3D printed if you want to 3D print it, but you can substitute some parts for real parts or resin parts, which is going to jump the price up uh, a little bit. I'm excited to go through this journey of building a proton pack with you. If you've been waiting around to see uh, what my other videos are gonna be, or if you've been just jonesing to build a proton pack and you didn't really know where to start, this is gonna be a fantastic way for you to uh, learn how to build a proton pack completely from scratch. Like I said, we're gonna go through every single step, painting, you know, sanding, um, all the stuff that you you know that takes a lot of time we're going to go through all of it so that at the end of the process you will have a full size pretty close to screen accurate replica proton pack with lights and sound and if we get froggy we might add some smoke some smoke effects i think that would be cool if we can add some smoke effects so if you've been looking to build a proton pack of your own you're going to want to stick around. I love this plan. I'm excited to be a part of it. Let's do it.